Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. There's a video that's been circulating over the past few weeks and you might have seen it. And apparently the video was originally made a few years ago during the beginning of the Ukraine war, but it got a new wave of popularity after the conflict in Israel and Palestine started. And the video clip is of Biden calling for a draft in 2023. And don't worry, it is fake, but it has sparked some interesting conversations online about what a military draft would be like in 2023. But before we get into this story, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. All right, so before I get any further into this video, the following video that I'm about to show you is AI. I'm just making it very clear, it is not real. Nobody get freaked out yet. You will probably quickly notice that Biden is actually articulate and well-spoken in this video, so that should tip you off that this really is not real. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. This video was so hard to find. I think once people realized that it was fake, they were wiping it from the internet, but we found it, so let's watch. Putin's illegal occupation of Kyiv and the impending Chinese blockade of Taiwan has created a two-front national security crisis that requires more troops than the volunteer military can supply. Literally does not sound like him at all. Like somebody who can actually speak, who's not geriatric. <laughs> Can't be real, guys. I have received guidance from General Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs, that the recommended way forward will be to invoke the Selective Service Act as is my authority as president. Terrifying. The first to be called in a sequence determined by national lottery will be men and women whose 20th birthday falls during calendar year 2023. Also clear evidence that this is not real. Women are not part of selective service yet. We're gonna talk about that later, but it's just men right now. So again, not real. Just making everybody <laughs> feel more comfortable. Remember, you're not sending your sons and daughters to war. You're sending them to freedom. God bless our troops and God bless Ukraine. Once again, it's not real. <laughs> back there is not real. But it is just so creepy to watch. And then him at the end saying, oh, we're fighting for freedom. No, we would not be fighting for freedom. We're fighting because you are a terrible president that is getting us into these messes over and over again. But hopefully it does not happen. Somebody commented and said, this could become real. Another person said, they cannot have my kids under any circumstances. Apparently the person who made this video made it to prove a point and to show what could be, what could possibly happen under the Biden administration based on the current state of the world. And it spread like wildfire with many people seeing clips or headlines thinking that it actually was true. And once everybody stopped freaking out, many started making satirical videos about what the draft would be like if it actually happened now. And it is not pretty. They're a bit funny, but it's also terrifying. Just watch. Why is everybody saying Gen Z is going to get drafted? Like, <laughs> no, we're not. And you know why I know that? Because we're just going to say no. I understand it was like that in like the 1940s. What else is there to do in 1940 besides shoot people? We have things to do nowadays. We have twerk, be bisexual eat hot chip, lie. And we're also like really mentally ill. I have like six of these. And finally, like guns are like so tacky. Like, can you imagine just like pulling up with a gun? Like that is so embarrassing. Like what is this, the revolutionary war? No, like, let's just chat. There's no need for all the like, like, no. <laughs> no. It's not gonna happen, don't worry. Now, obviously, this is a tad bit satirical, and he's kind of joking, but he's kind of not. My generation has no interest in doing this. They do not think it's a big deal whatsoever. They're just like, no, we wouldn't go. We wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, because you live a privileged life, because you have never had to think about that before. And also him just saying that he would not go and saying that in 1940, there was nothing better to do than go to war. I'm sorry, we live in the digital age now. You can hide all you want. The government can find you. They are literally listening to you 24 seven. They will know where you are. They will find you. I don't know how I need to get this through your head. They do not care if you are hiding in your mother's basement. The government has the means to find you. One person said, if that is our representative of the future, we are doomed. We're doomed! Yeah, we certainly are. Another person said, my neighbor didn't even know that you had to answer a jury notice. She thought that she could just ignore it because she was busy. I mean, I kind of enjoy the people just don't care like, oh, the government's gonna come for me? Like, try it, try me, I just won't show up. The repercussions of that are not funny because government overreach, they will hunt you down. They have hunted people down. They will do it again. So it's not funny, but the confidence is a bit inspiring. All right, here's another one. Gen Z is the wrong generation to threaten with a draft. Not only are we not doing that bullshit, do you really think we scared of the repercussions of not going to war if you get drafted? First of all, y'all don't even have enough prisons to imprison people who don't wanna go. Secondly, the majority of Gen Z is physically or mentally ill. And if we aren't, we sure will make ourselves. Because as a black man myself, what do I look like fighting for a country that don't give a damn about me? It really is sad. The fact that my generation is so mentally ill that the military might just be like, oh, we don't want you. Like, I'm really not in favor of a draft, but that's really not the way I would go about avoiding it. Not a good look for our country, no matter which way you slice it. It's over. 
We are screwed. Somebody said, facts. I'll go get diagnosed just so I can't go. Another person said, I will quite literally not take it seriously. There's literally a trend going around on TikTok right now where people have put together a template and they email it to their family members or their friends. And it's like, you've been drafted and they put like a government seal on it. And it's all of these like 20 year old girls who are not even part of selective service. They are not actually eligible to be drafted, but they're like freaking out, crying, calling their moms like, I'm not going. Literally a trend right now. All right, last video. So five years of rent free living, free food, and no responsibilities versus being immediately obliterated by an AK-47 the moment I set foot on that battlefield. This draft occurs, I'm headed for the hills, baby. I know a place, it has everything I could possibly need except for electricity and cell service, which is gonna be perfect because you won't be able to find me. Do I look like somebody who the authorities are gonna be chasing after, hunting down because they need me? No, you're not a school board parent or a right-wing extremist. They actually don't care about you at all. Go find those people who are so like pro second amendment and wear like, freaking American flag thongs and all that shit. Like, go find them. They, they, they have a concealed carry anyway. They know what they're doing. They've, they've done the classes. Go find them. You don't want me fighting for this country. I promise you that. You're not wrong. That's not the military that we want. But in 2023, guys, that's kind of what we're stuck with. We already know what the military is doing. We know what the troops look like. Things aren't great. And at least he's self-aware and being honest, I guess. But I really struggle to find this genuinely funny because at the same time, he's not joking. He does not take this seriously whatsoever. And this is something that we need to take seriously. We are so comfortable with this safe haven world that we have grown up in, that my generation can't even wrap their brain around the fact that this could happen again and it could happen to them. Just out of curiosity, we could use the cards to buy gum, then immediately quit the army, right? You know, playing you off for chumps. He does not discriminate based on whether you are this or whether you are pro second amendment and wear American flag thongs. It just doesn't. We do not know what real war is. We have watched various global conflicts take place far away from us. And we've been able to judge them, have takes on them, analyze them from a very privileged point of view, but normal non-military Americans have never actually faced the consequences. We have never physically been involved. Somebody commented and said, the civilized world is so far detached from this concept and therefore soft, too soft. The draft would be horrible, but it would change the mindset of generations and bring them back to reality. That reminds me of that it's not really a meme, but it's that picture that always circulates every couple of months where it's like good men create good times, good times create like soft men, soft men create bad times, bad times create good times. Like we are in a bad times that need to create good men. Our young men should not have to die for our government's wars. You only need a draft when people are not driven to enlist, when they do not want to enlist themselves. And they aren't enlisting right now because we don't have anything that can unify us or that people want to fight for and lay down their life for. These days, Americans wouldn't actually be fighting for freedom we would be fighting because of government corruption and because we have a geriatric president who has the worst foreign policy I have ever seen. That is why we are fighting. No way in hell should that happen. Like we definitely need to protect ourselves from this man and from our government, but it shouldn't have to be with a draft. Maybe it should be with birch gold. Yet again, we are facing the threat of a government shutdown later this month. And yet again, the administration will ultimately deal with it in the same way that they always do, with more spending. More spending equals a lower value of the dollar, which means that you need to protect your savings by diversifying your savings into gold with the help of the birch Gold Group. Birch Gold will help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold for no money out of pocket. With an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied customers, you can count on Birch Gold to help you start diversifying your portfolio. And for every $10,000 you spend by December 22nd, Birch Gold will send you a free gold bar. Do not let your savings become a victim of the further devaluation of the dollar through more government spending. Text Cooper to 989898 to receive a free info kit on gold and claim your eligibility before Black Friday to receive free gold bars on your qualified purchases. Again, that's Cooper to 989898. And you can at least feel like your finances are secure, even though the world is possibly going up in flames. Somebody else had a totally different opinion and said, agreed that all the pro second A people should be the first to be drafted. They love their guns so much, they should get priority in the war queue. And Ian Chiang said, why? They're opposed to foreign intervention. Very, very true. Very, very true. Somebody else said Gen Z can't even handle a Wi-Fi outage, let alone a draft. Maybe boot camp will teach them the difference between a real problem and a TikTok glitch. Maybe that's the balance. My generation, we all need to go to boot camp. I'll go with you. I don't think we should be drafted because I'm against the draft based on principle because I do not want to die for government corruption, but maybe that would toughen us all up a little bit. All right, who's not dead? Sound off. Another person said they have a basic misunderstanding. If you are drafted, then you will serve or be criminally charged. You could run to Canada, but that may not be an option this time. And that is exactly right. It was illegal to skip the draft back in 1940, and God forbid if it ever happened again, it would be illegal to evade it now. Every guy knows this, even the ones in those videos, because if they are American men over the age of 18, 
they have already signed up for selective service, or as the military calls it, an insurance policy, which I personally find disgusting. They literally say it right here. Maintaining the selective service system and draft resignation provides a hedge against unforeseen threats and a relatively low-cost insurance policy against underestimating the maximum level of threat we expect our armed forces to face. And while I understand the logic behind this, and I know that we have used it before and many people are in favor of it because, you know, they want to serve their country or they think that it's a good thing, I also think that it's a very noble and good thing to serve your country. But again, these days with our current government, this current administration, I don't trust it. It really is an insurance policy. They are playing with people's lives. They are playing with young men's lives. And I know that a lot of girls don't know anything about this. They don't even know about selective service because we haven't had it to know about it but every young man in your life does. And even though proposals have been thrown around to get women to be eligible for the draft and for selective service, none have stuck. And of course, that's not an issue that the feminists are getting upset about. I wonder why. Isn't it funny how the moment push comes to shove, women reject feminism when they actually have to work a nine to five, when they realize that the corporate world is not all it's cracked up to be. They're like, mm, why did we actually fight for that? Like, mm, why, why did we do that? Oh, we have to be, we have to be drafted? Oh, I don't really want to do that. Why did you cause this in the first place? This is your fault, not mine. Somebody else said, all of a sudden, I love cooking and cleaning. And one guy said, no, no, you wanted this. And that's very true. Your feminism caused this because those proposals for women joining the draft, they were all about equity and equality between the genders. That's literally what you wanted. Obviously, the point I've made so many times in this video, that video of Biden is fake. There are no firm plans to draft men or women in this country, at least not right now, or that we know of, fingers crossed. But it's also not a far off notion. Like we watched it happen in Ukraine a few years ago. In Israel, both men and women are required to serve in the military, but I actually like that situation a little better because they are required to join and serve their country and learn those skills regardless of whether there is a conflict or a war going on. In America, you are literally just the insurance policy. That's the difference. That's why I don't like it. But you know, the IDF, you are required to serve. And you know, we can laugh about these videos and laugh about the satire. But again, I really don't think it's all that funny because we do live in a bubble, a very safe bubble. And we've lived in this bubble for several decades. But this fragile bubble remains secure thanks to the men and women who willingly choose to sign their name on the dotted line and lay down their life for this country. So those stupid TikToks of people shitting on the military and saying that they would never want to join or be drafted, it should just be a reminder to thank those young people and the people in your life who have decided to serve in our military and decided to try and protect us and take this seriously. Because yes, we are currently still in our bubble, but it is a very fragile bubble and it gets more and more fragile by the day thanks to our current government. This is not the time to be making jokes or dilly-dallying or turning a blind eye to where our country is going. This is the time to get prepared. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the comment section and that you maybe even learned something new. If you have not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode.